Praise the Lord. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Jamaica. My name is Reverend Patrick O'Connor, and on behalf of our worship team and media team, welcome to this service. Somebody asked me this morning, how are you going to preach to pews which are empty? I said, you can't see the people, but I'm looking out and seeing generations of those who served the Lord, from those who served the Lord in the 16th century when Zachariah Walker was here, for those who in the 18th century and early 19th century from Bione Bradner to Andrew McGill worshipped and served here. For those who were here under Donald William Ruth Wright to William M. Stark and those who are here, we are here because faith finds a way of persisting. But I'm here in the midst of this time to invite you for a few moments to look on what God has to say to us. This is a disruptive time in human history. It's a time in human history when there is significant vulnerability in people's lives. And if, as you think about your life, you're in the midst of this disruptive moment, you realize that this is no ordinary time when all the streets of our city are empty, when you can get on a subway and have the whole car for yourself, when there's nobody on the street, you realize this is a disruptive time. It's a time when our leaders and those around us are being challenged in every way when the solution to our issues and our problems is not throwing more money at it or coming out with political pronouncements. The solution to the crisis of our time seems to be goodwill and good common sense among people and a willingness to trust in God and in each other. You may have come to worship today in the place where you are and you are wrestling with this cycle of despair. Some people here are just feeling really depressed. You have had a number of days of hearing bad news and progressively worse news and the anticipation is that more people are going to get sick and more people are going to die and the weight of it is so great on you. Some of us are wrestling this day with the, the guilt of things that we wanted to have done and we didn't get to do. Some of us are just angry about all that we can't control and all that we cannot master. And some of us are downright fearful. It is an opportunity for us this morning to get back to the Word of God. And those of us, those of you who are joining this service we're in the midst of a sermon series which asks the question, are you thriving or are you surviving? And as we ask this question about are you thriving or surviving, we look upon a servant of God by the name of Simon Peter. Jesus told Peter that his world was going to be disrupted. Jesus told Peter and the disciples that instead of a trajectory where things were going to be good and happy forever, that things were going to end up in a place of suffering. Jesus was challenging Peter and the disciples to realize that life as they knew it was going to change. And Jesus said to them that in, for you to be able to 
respond to what is going to come, you will need a different way of being engaged. God will have to wash you. Somebody asked me about this time, and they said, have you ever seen anything like this? Is there any prior history? And I say to people, it's like Noah's flood, the plagues of Egypt, the Babylonian captivity, all in one. In fact, in 1941, there was a French writer by the name of Alberta Camus who wrote a story about a virus which spread uncontrollably from animals to humans and ended up destroying half of the population of a city. And many people ask, how did Camus know it? Well, he really didn't know about this. He had studied plagues in multiple places, and he came up with an idea of what would happen. And he said, part of the challenge of the time in which this plague was coming is that human beings were vulnerable to being exterminated at any time, and human beings needed the ability of somebody else to help them. One of our members asked, is this the end of time? Is this the apocalypse? Is this the great tribulation? I say to people that in this time, the challenge is that we have no control. When you have no control, it makes you realize that sometimes you can put your focus in life on chasing the wrong things. How many of us who are connecting with this worship service have focused on the wrong things? How many of us thought that if we amassed all the materialism that we could, that somehow it would have the ability to make our lives successful and happy? Brothers and sisters, even when God blesses you, it's simply a blessing, but it's not a source of foundation. Many of us have wrapped, have a warped perspective. We thought we were the masters of our lives and the owners of our own destiny. And yet God reminds us that it can be taken away in a very short space of time. Some of us, as the scripture says, have trusted in chariots and horses. Some of us have trusted in the powers of this world instead of the power of the living God. Peter was challenged by Jesus that for this disruptive moment in his life and in his world, he had to stop and look at what he was putting his trust in. Peter also I believe, had a bit another issue. Is that sometimes we are connecting with God and we are connecting with the church and we are doing spiritual things, but we are doing it on our own terms. And God had to say to Peter, if I don't wash you, if I don't cleanse you, if I don't make you new and different, you are not going to come through this in a way that allows you to be good for others and good for the world. Can I ask you today as you are here connecting with God, how many of us are like Peter that God wants to do something new in our lives, but we are reluctant to break out of the patterns that we have been accustomed to. 
The word of God tells that when human beings make great assumptions about the future, that we can think that we control life. When human beings act as if we have a mortgage on time, we can mistake the realization that only God holds tomorrow. When human beings behave as if we are powerful instead of humbling ourselves before God, we can miss out on what God is saying. I believe in this time of disruption and this time of turbulence that God is inviting all of us as human beings to come back to him. To get back to being with God. And when we come back to being with God, the first thing is that God has to do is that God has to wash us and cleanse us and make us new. And washing is, about, is a great moment of self-awareness because it means that in my life and in my family and in your life and in your family, in this church and in every other church across our cities and across the nation and the nations of the world that maybe we have allowed human selfishness and greed and a desire to have it our way dominate us instead of walking according to God and God's principles and God's word. Peter came into this moment with Jesus with a big ego. He says, God, no, you can't wash me. And Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you're not going to make it through. If I don't cleanse you, if I don't renew you, if I don't help you to let go of that which is unimportant so you can focus on that which is important, then your life is not going to fulfill its real potential. Peter was at like another man in the Old Testament. Do any of us remember a great man by the name of Naaman? The commander of the Syrian army when God said, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be clean. And yet we read in 2 Kings 5.10 that he had a hard time doing it on God's terms. Listen, brothers and sisters, if, if this is the week in which we're going to be challenged even more. Try not to do it on your terms, but say, Lord, I surrender. Wash me and cleanse me and make me new. The psalmist says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Wash me from this focus on me and mine, so that I may be a vessel, an instrument for God in the world. Many of us in this time are challenged in different ways, but when we ask God to wash us, God will make us whole. Can I ask you this day, as you think about your own life and your own journey. As part of God washing you, as Jesus washed Peter and the disciples, if God washes us, can you ask God this week to help you to focus on changing something which limited you from doing God's will? There are people listening and people praying and people fellowshipping who said to themselves, I can't pray. Well, guess what? It's a time to pray. The people who said, I didn't have time to study God's word. Now you have time to study God's word. The people who said, I 
can't evangelize. Now you have multiple moments to be able to share some good news with somebody else. What will your focus be this week? Try to focus on doing something. Every one of us to make it through this time of stress and challenge and difficulty will need to have a victory each day. Focus on one victory, one day at a time, and ask God to see you through. Can I ask you to focus on something else? Focus on doing good, not just feeling good. When you watch the news, you are going to hear things that are going to cause you not to feel good. They're real, they're hard, but if your focus is on doing good, then you will release a fresh energy in your life. Find somebody to help, somebody to encourage, somebody to inspire, somebody to bless Somebody to pray for. We have multiple people in our city and across the land who have to go out to work. Find a nurse, find a doctor, find a fireman, find a city worker, a state worker, a police officer. Somebody who is making a difference and do something to do good in their life. But lastly... We ought to focus on God's power, not our own willpower. There are people who have committed themselves, I'm going to do everything I can to make it through. You're not going to make it through on your strength alone. You need the strength and the power of Almighty God. Many people are worried in the battle of this moment that you won't be able to hold on. Can I suggest to you that it's not your job to hold on. God will do the holding on and he has promised I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never let you go. Hold on to God and God will see you through. The old hymn writer says it in this way. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. And so let our focus be on the power and the strength of God so that God will lead us through this week. All of us at home and in the places where we're connecting today have a chance to get back to the basics. And so let me take you back to this is a disruptive time. This is a time when the range of human emotions are going to be out of control. But in the midst of that time, if you ask God to help you to let go and to trust him, God will wash us and help us and cleanse us and see us through. This week, pray about something that God is asking you to do. Spend some time to write about it. Find somebody to share with so that you can inspire each other. And if there is some good, some act of mercy, some act of kindness God is asking you to do, act on it. And instead of being like Peter reluctant, 
will become vessels and servants of God. Remember, after Jesus washed Peter, his whole life turned around, and eventually Peter became a rock for the church and a vessel and an instrument of hope in the world. This week, make a commitment to act on the word of God, and God will see us through. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for all of us who are part of the different congregations who are connecting this morning. Thank you for your church universal. Thank you for women and men of faith. Thank you for those who are seeking something to hold on to. In this time, oh God, be our rock, be our fortress, be our deliverer. Be the one who holds our hands and walks us through this difficult moment. And Lord, we pray for our neighbors. We pray for the strangers who we have never connected with. We pray for leaders across our city, across our county, across our state, across the nation, and across the world. Lord God, bring us all together to do what leads to wellness and wholeness for all. And may your blessings be with us individually and as a congregation and as families and as your people of God everywhere. This we pray through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.